So to begin, I'm going to share an anecdote um, that was in a recent book called The Future of the Professions. And in this anecdote, it's talking about um, a management training course for executives at a um, hardware company, basically a company that makes power tools. And famously, this executive training program begins with this slide, which is a picture of their um, most famous or, or biggest product. And so they would have all the assembled executives in a room and they would ask this question to start out the training. They would say, could you please confirm that this is in fact what our company sells? And there would be an awkward sort of silence and eventually someone would put up their hands and say, yes, that's, that's a picture of what we sell. And of course, uh, this was a bit of a setup and the trainers immediately flipped to this, this slide and they say, no, actually, this is what we sell. This is what our customers actually ultimately want. And our job is to find cheaper, uh, more optimal ways to provide them with this solution. And so the reason that they chose to start the book, The Future of the Professions, off with this anecdote is because what Richard and David Susskind, the authors of the book, were, were pointing out was that over time, there's a tendency amongst professions to confuse the means with the ends. So the means in this analogy is the drill. The ends is the whole, is the ultimate sort of what you're actually wanting or the ultimate effect. So what we've found in engaging in conversation about the higher potential of the engineering profession is that people that have been thinking about this for a while can typically quite quickly uh, categorize different parts of the drill or the means. They can look at sort of subsystems, so they can think about the university experience, different types of engineering workplaces, the pathways from K to 12, how we regulate the profession. So that's one way to consider the drill. You can also consider sort of the means in which um, individual engineers or groups of engineers add value. So by designing, by innovating, by um, upholding high levels of ethics and professionalism, by expressing leadership, by advocating on societal issues. And there's even some cross-cutting sort of enablers that are quite well understood around advocacy for individual engineers and for the profession itself. So individual engineers in the profession need to be in a position to be able to um, add value over time self-regulation, the education and training that brings about certain knowledge, skills, and attitudes, um, how we promote the profession to the general public, and even diversity within the profession. These are all examples of the means in which engineers uh, and the engineering profession delivers value. Now, diversity is an interesting one because it's a means in terms of the engineering profession itself delivering value, but you could also view it as an ends from a social justice point of view, which it, which it absolutely is as well. So anyway, the, these means are quite well understood within the profession, and if you go to any sort of major body that does work within engineering, like the National Academy of Engineering in the States, or the Royal Academy in the UK, um, or Engineers Canada, you can typically find programming related to most of these means to help optimize um, our means, optimize the drill. And when you also consider the, the ends, or the, or the whole of the profession, what is the whole of the engineering profession, again, quite a bit has been written, not quite as much as uh, the focus on the means, but um, you know, there's this concept of the engineering profession helping to yield Canada's competitiveness, um, to promote public safety and public interest, to help meet broad societal needs, uh, like the triple bottom line of economic, social, and environmental um, performance, um, to help solve the grand challenges like climate change of the 21st century. And you can even kind of zoom out and even take a bigger view of engineering helping to create a world that works for everyone. So all of this terrain is pretty well mapped out for the engineering profession. What we've been finding is actually where the gap seems to be is in talking about the specific role the engineering profession plays in, in applying its natural means to achieving these broad ends. Because the interesting thing is when you look at these ends is they're so big that you could probably ascribe pretty similar ends to a lot of different professions or a lot of different activities. So the really interesting question that we've been honing in on is what is the specific role or purpose of the engineering profession? When we actually go back and look at some of uh, past literature, for example, this was a paper on the social function of engineering, a current assessment that was uh, appeared in a journal called Engineering as a Social Enterprise back in the early 1990s. And in it, one of the quotes was, in general, the voice of engineers in the discussion of engineering social role has been weak, episodical, and often self-centered. The assessment of engineering's impact in society has largely been left to others. The situation is quite different in the sciences. Scientists have written prolifically and in depth about the social role and impact of their activities. So basically what we're, what we're talking about in these videos is diving into this question that this paper says um, engineers have been reluctant to or, or have shied away from diving into the past. 
namely what is the specific role within society that the engineering profession can and should play.